Hey y'all, I'm here today to talk about one, a subject from one of the greatest novels ever written and also one of the greatest pieces of satire you will ever read. What is that? Animal Farm. And in this video, as you can see in the title, it is the symbolism of Animal Farm. Now, obviously, if you've ever read any kind of introduction of Animal Farm and you know anything about history, you'll know that the, you know, George Orwell was taking shots at the communistic ways, the communists, because a lot of people got communism twisted, and I'm not going to really get into that ideology in this video. But the, you know, the Stalinist regime, and even somewhat of uh, England at the time, you know, Great Britain, how it was, the path it was going. But there was many elements deep even deeper than than that whole how it played out so i'll just begin with the beginning how the what major represented major the the pig that got them all you know riled up and then he eventually died major he was was kind of your prophet i could say to to, to keep it simple your prophet he was your you know you I just keep it simple. I had prophet. You're not just a political speaker, but he was a man. Well, I I'll make it with human since it is symbolism. He would be your man that would stand up. Whether now he happened to be old, but it doesn't matter. It can be someone who's young, someone who's middle aged, and someone who's old, elderly. He's the person who will stand up and will talk about the issues the real issues he will say what needs to be said and he doesn't care if he lives or dies it just needs to be said because it's the right thing because it's truth because injustice is happening immorality is happening all that kind of stuff so major represents that voice not only a voice of reason but a voice you know not just of logic and reason but a voice of knowing about human rights we should be treated better you know what I'm saying? Talking about humanity. And he's the antithesis of what eventually came about. As you will see. And you know, if you've read as if you've read Animal Form, you know what I'm talking about. You know, Napoleon and his boys, his pigs, what what they stood for. He was about freedom. And about the rights of every in that case animal, but the rights of every man. The rights of every, you know, person. What did Napoleon and his, and his pig stand for? The exact opposite. They stood for totalitarian rule, absolute monarchy, you know, fascism, government just having every say over your life. Big Brother, <laughs> another Orwellian, Orwellian um, terminology for those who've read 1984. And if you never read 1984 or Animal Farm, you better go check them out. Legendary stuff. And even Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, but that's a whole nother top for one of day. Anyways, Fahrenheit 451 as well. Just throwing all these out there because great reads. And they reveal a lot about life and how things are even to this day. Another, another key point. Um, the character of Boxer. Now, Boxer, yo, Boxer. What did Boxer represent? Boxer represented three, three points. Number one, he represented the people, the the lower class, the the poor who everything is put on, who drive, you know, whether the poor or the lower middle class, who drive the nation along, who support the nation, who are the backbone of the nation. But they get treated like crap. He he also represents, you know, you remember in the battle for the windmill. He was the the military force, the you know your army, not your higher ups, not your generals, lieutenants, captains, none of them, not your admirals, none of them. He was you know your infantrymen. He was your not even cavalry. You know you're just your regular dudes who out go out there and potentially sacrifice their lives. And he represents the elderly because you you know the the those who discarded, whether it be the disabled, the elderly, the minorities, the who the the homeless, all them kind of groups that are looked down upon because you remember what happens to him. I don't want to spoil it, to, but how he got off, how Boxer got off. 
Still to this day, yo, just saddens me. Just saddens me. But with boxing, man, boxing makes me mad. And Orwell did a beautiful job because normally, you know, rise up and, you know, become heroic status. Boxer was by far the strongest uh, creature on animal form. Boxer could have easily, with his might alone, and this showed, this showed something very true about the 20th century. And it's a carryover until the 21st century. Boxer, by natural selection, by survival of the fittest. Now, although I don't necessarily agree with all, you know, with Darwinism as a whole. I Obviously, if you've seen any of my videos, especially One Piece videos, you know I believe in the value of strength. And I have a whole you know ideology on, on strength itself and not just physical strength but you look at nature strength matters but on animal form the strongest creature was subjugated that is irrational illogical but that's what happens to humanity a lot of times the most I mean look at numbers look at the numbers we have in, for example in the states you have over 300 million people ruled by very few and I ain't just talking about the government. I'm talking about those who pull the strings of government. Relatively few. 0.0001% of the people own 99% of the nation's wealth. Now, does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? I'm talking about personal wealth. I'm not talking about how, you know, the public sector, the government runs their BS. But I'm talking about private, the private sector. 0.00. 1% or 0. 0.0001% yeah, so pretty much a thousandth of a percent that's reality Boxer got subjugated even though he had great might you look at Benjamin now Benjamin when I was younger up until I had a recent revelation um, about I believe it was sometime this year sometime earlier this year I had a revelation because I was pissed off because of Bo I mean Benjamin intelligent Highly, by far the most intelligent creature on animal form, and what he represents is again three things. Number one, the intellectual elite, the intellectual class, not the arrogant pricks that be out here, not the educated, but the intellectuals, those who are the thinkers, those who can see beyond, those who perceive the greater reality, who are highly observant with keen senses. Okay. Number two, he represents also the the elders because I believe he's the oldest animal on Animal Farm. He represents the elders who've been there, done that, who, you know, in a way get sometimes complacent, who, you know, don't pass on their, this isn't to all elders, but it's a warning. Pass on your information, you know, inspire the next generation. Oh, this is how it's always been. I'm going to outlive regimes. Become a bit apathetic. You understand what I'm saying? You know, less empathetic as time has jaded you. As terrible experiences. Because he went from one terrible regime to the next. And his, you know, he's become kind of an Uncle Uncle Tom. In, in a way. In a way. <laughs> Uncle Ruckus a, a bit. Uh, for, 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 your boom, for the Boondocks fans out there. And so, not only that, he represents a third thing. He represents someone who has the ability to change, but chooses not to. Now, along with Boxer, and, I, and, I, and this is what had made me highly upset. Again, natural selection. He was the most intelligent. Boxer was the most powerful. Them two together should have been running Animal Farm. They should have been, rule, you could say ruler, but they should have been the leaders of Animal Farm. But no. What I realized, and, and I, I reflected on myself, Benjamin, I'm, I'm becoming, I be, I've over time become kind of like Benjamin, because he's Benjamin the cynic, he's cynical, and when you don't have the direct ability to bring change, or the change that you would desire, the change that you want, the change that you know is necessary, you become even increasingly cynical. When you see the, the world around you just continually deteriorating, when you see morality going out the roof, when you see logic and reason just, you know, being replaced by total insanity. And not not insanity 
on, on the kind of genius status. No, insanity of the old classic definition. You know, you continue to you continue to do the same thing over and over again, but expecting the same expecting a different result. You continually do the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. Exactly how most of government officials will pick. Just saying. Shots fired. However you want to take it. And so, Benjamin, I've come to understand. And it's, it's a, what George Orwell did with Benjamin and Boxer as well. Because I kind of linked them two together. It shows how humanity... And, and, and people want to talk about how we've evolved as a species. Uh, foolishness. Individuals evolve in their minds, okay? How, you know, humanity, it it goes against nature, which also thus debunks the so-called theory of evolution as normally stated. Because humanity goes against nature. And I don't mean rising above nature because of the minds we have. No, we go against the very rules and very, you know, design of nature. This is what we do. With the way we pick mates and everything else. With the way we, we, we allow ourselves to be governed and ruled and subjugated. Why the way we allow to be ourselves to be enslaved? That, that's what happens. And, and animal form represents that beautifully. Animal form as itself represents, you know, you could talk about a whole separate discussion on that. All the elements of the animal form represents. Another key point that is often missed by people reading it. Do y'all remember Jesse the dog? Now... In the movie adaptation that was made, probably, I believe it was back in the 90s, it, Jesse became kind of the protagonist, uh, whatever. But I'm talking about the novel, okay? Jesse, if y'all remember, minor character, but played big roles. Because she was the mother of, I believe, the three. I believe it was three. It might have been two. I forget how many of her, um, her, her pups. Napoleon took them from birth and raised them. And what they become? Vicious guard dogs and technically Nobody dared touch them. And that represents so much important stuff because it represents two key parts. Number one, the indoctrination, brainwashing, and programming of children that governments almost always do. That is what they do. I know they've tried to do that with my generation. Tell you that right now. Tell you that right now. They've tried to program us, brainwash, and indoctrinate us. <laughs> Look at the, the so-called edu most of the education system. It is not educating. It ain't. It's not teaching people how to think. No, no, no. It's teaching them what to think, how to think, instead of allowing them to have an open mind and to freely use their God-given abilities to logically uh, analyze and to reason reasonably, you know, sift through things, filter through information. Just what it is. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to be a thinker, going to be an intellectual, but people should be adults, should be able to use basic logic and reason. That's just what it is. Number two, what it represents is how ruthless, how conniving, how whatever you want to say, how government will do anything it can to input, you know, establish its power might is right that's how it's been throughout most of human history if not yeah pretty much all of human history might equals right to the victor go to spoils the victor rewrites history rewrites not just rights rewrites history you know even though history the truth will eventually come out but you know where if you try to go up against oh no no we can't be having that do i i'll throw the 60s out here jfk John F. Kennedy, you know, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, however you want to say it, Malcolm X, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., <laughs> Robert Bobby Kennedy, Kent State, 1970s. That's just small, a small little taste of what's going on. Where they, they were to the point where they can control what you put into your own bodies, how you use your body, you know. Rules should be set up for certain things, but what you can consume that guy's you say, and not only that, their own constitutions and whatever. Oh, that that's null and void because they can rewrite that anytime they see fit, they get ready to rewrite that anytime. It's all good because they're the government, 
because they're the government. Like any any other symbolisms I want to hit on. Like I said, this this book, this novel, is is a phenomenal story in of itself. But the symbolism in it. Any other key points I, I would like to like to mention? You know, the rewriting of of words. I talked about that. The different characters. Um, the switch of regimes. You know, and, that, and that's another. That's a that's a key point about government. Eventually, government always wants it becomes power, you know gets filled with power hungry men, tyrants, you know dictators. It it will eventually go back to that. You may have the pushback, but government, it, you know, for those who don't know, I'm an anarchist. Just going to come out and say it. I'm an anarchist. This is what I am. You know, for those who misunder don't understand about anarchy, I'll probably do some different videos on that. Um, why I am. You know different elements of it to you know try to get the confusion out the way of what anarchy is and what an anarchist at least is supposed to be because they're not everybody who claims to be an anarchist is an anarchist and that's just like just life but when you look at history when you look at current events when you understand understand sociology economics psychology philosophy when you understand science when you understand you know, and in literature, hints at it. when you understand humanity, at least in inkling, I could explain these things to a child, and a child would understand. Government, at the end of the day, it's supposed to, to, to do two things. Number one, government is supposed to protect the individual from harm from others, and... From theft, pretty much. From, hold on, yeah. The government is supposed to protect the individual from harm from others. And number two, the government is supposed to protect the individual from theft, fraud, and all other such activities. That's it. When the government supersedes those things, it abuses its power. As it will always do. What did Lord Acton's historical principle is true, is always true. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are almost always bad men. Look throughout history. Look at the heroes. I mean, Grace Slick did a song, No More Heroes. And she talked about the different conquerors and whatnot. Most wars. People want to blame religion. Look at Animal Farm does that too. Most wars is because government. Government government if you don't believe me hey, you don't have to take my word for any of it just like I said read the novel look at reality ladies and gentlemen pull the veil from your eyes and see the truth I'm not telling y'all what to believe but it is novels like Animal Farm that really dig into the into the darkness into the light into the very death of the souls of humanity, of individuals, of men, women, and children. And it begs us to ask ourselves questions. And it's novels like these that got me, and I still, you know, still among my tops. Probably, when I say top five, yeah, probably top five favorite books. It, it still, you know, it got me to really begin to think, and I'm, and I'm grateful for my English teacher, um, my English teacher in high school, for having us read that, I believe it was ninth. Yeah, it was even my ninth grade year. You know, it's an easy read. It's not. Not everybody's gonna like it. I, I will say this: not everybody's gonna like the book, but it's a book that everyone should read. It is a must read. It. I highly recommend reading Animal Farm by George Orwell. All right, y'all. The unexpected wonder. I know this video has been long enough for some of y'all, and if you stay watching this whole video, I congratulate you because listen, man. Yo, it probably some stuff I, I could have said more on symbolism, but it's just tell me y'all thoughts on the book Animal Form. Tell me y'all thoughts about what you thought I said. If you think I'm off base, so be it. If you think I'm dead on, tell me such. Um, you know, video video requests I accept them. What what do y'all want me to say? You know, what would y'all you know like me to talk about? All right, y'all have a beautiful day, beautiful night, peace, God bless.